Well, there's been an explosion in the number of states that have approved cannabis, either for medical or uh, recreational use in this country, and a similar explosion in the number of facilities that are being built. Uh, the only three states that don't have cannabis in any way are Idaho, Nebraska, and South Dakota. Everybody else is doing it. So we've got an expert with us today, Sam Andres, uh, senior AIA. He's a senior principal and partner with ZWR and Partners and MJ12 Design Studio. And Sam has built, you know, something like 80, uh, designed and built about 80 uh, facilities in 13 states and even in New Zealand and Macedonia, my goodness. So Sam, tell us a little bit, what, what's, uh, first of all, let's start off, there's, there's THC and then there's CBD, tetra, hydro, cannabidiol, and cannabidiol. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so there's two different things. Right. So, you know, the the real difference between THC and C B D hemp and and more of a THC based plant is the amount of THC contained within the plant. C B D is really a, a more uh hemp is a is a low THC, high C B D type plant. The the type of plants are the same how you grow them is basically the same cultivation methodology is the same okay um, all right cost yeah. of cultivation right you know but thc has much higher profit margins so. okay all right but mo most of the stuff most of the commercial stuff that's being done in the states is is the cbd is that, is that correct um in the, the low THC states, it is the CBD. Okay. And then where we have recreational and, and medical marijuana, uh, THC. All right. So uh, I understand from our the course that you and I worked on with, with others uh, that uh, there are six types of, really six types of cannabis facility. There's a cultivation of them, which we see that in the, in the background here, processing, extraction of the of the uh, important materials, the infusion into into something else, uh, the operations, and uh, the dispensary where people buy the stuff. Uh, we're going to concentrate on the uh, cultivation, which you you in the business call the grow, and uh, a little bit about the dispensary. So tell us about the grow. Um, you know what's so hard about growing a marijuana plant? People people put it in a pot and a, put a seed in a pot and it grows all the time. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I think, um, so I think the interesting thing ab the, about cannabis cultivation, is there, no, there is really no defined best methodology that, that there's options for every aspect of, of cultivation. For instance, a medium, it could be hydroponic, like deep water culture, ebb and flow, aeroponics, aquaponics, or if a grower wants to go away from that, it could be um, rock wool, cocoa, perlite, um, or soils. The the number of plants per square foot is is also a choice of a grower. So the the type of grow that they're doing, if it's uh, uh, under LED, they may do smaller plants and and more of them per square foot. That impacts the veg time, and you know, basically, if they're if they're doing uh, larger plants, they're generally growing under HPS lighting and uh, more square footage for plants. Lighting and benching are options for for growers as well. They can what's do, what's benching, Sam? What's benching? benching? Benching is what the plants actually go on. So, you know, when the when the industry first kicked off, everything was really single tier benching under. Uh, HPS lighting, but with the advancements in LED technology and people trying to get more cultivation out of the same square footage of space, we've seen kind of a boom in multi-tier growth. So instead uh -huh. of a single tier, we're going dual tier in flower rooms. And when you go dual tier, now you're under LED lighting because the HPS is too hot. So you know, when you when you start thinking about a cultivation facility and all the things that go into it, there are a lot of different options that kind of drive the direction of of how the facility is designed. But these these facilities are really complex. They're almost like medical facilities, almost like an R and D facility. There's a lot going on. You got lighting, 
which is the I understand is the biggest cost. You've got you got to get the humidity and air and the airflow right. You got to get the you got to watch out for contamination of bugs bringing in bugs from outside. You got odor, uh, which I understand can be really a, a nuisance. Uh, uh, the smell of of the marijuana, fire protection. The, these these things can be very you know security issues. I mean, there's a lot going on with these facilities. These are not simple facilities to build, are they? No, they they aren't. And, you know, you're touching on a lot of the complexities. I mean, first off, everything about them is mathematically based. And, and what I mean by that is that the size of spaces are tied to cultivation methodologies, plant spacing, number of weeks that plants will be in flower and veg and and so you have to be able to mathematically figure out the ratios to size of spaces. Some of the things that you're talking about now, um, you know, where can things go wrong, right? Sizing of spaces is, is one. If you have too much flower room and not enough support, that could be an issue. Uh, lighting, I mean, understanding proper coverage of the lighting, uh, HPS and LED are vastly different. So the, the square footage and the layout of the lighting is important. Humidity and airflow, um, I can't stress enough in a cannabis facility how important the ability to control the environment actually is. And, and not just the HVAC system, but the building management system, how it notifies the HVA system of things like irrigation starting or humidity yeah. levels changing in the system's ability to to yeah. react to that um, that deals with with heat buildup uh, humidity in pockets or areas of the room to make sure that doesn't happen so yeah. air flow, I, I didn't even nation segregation yeah. rooms odor you mentioned that that's a huge issue as well there's many states that have specific requirements as related to odor Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you got zoning problems, and I didn't even mention irrigation. Just you know, getting the right amount of moisture in there. Let's turn br briefly to dispensaries. Um, you know, I, I think in, uh, I, I've heard that you know, kind of in the early days of state adoptions, there's been a lot of renovation stuff. Which which do you recommend as between new and re and renovation, uh, Sam? And uh, uh, any particular problems with the dispensaries or any anything you would recommend? One one item that Let's get this right on a dispensary. I, I think that if I were to, to say this is a thing you need to think about in the dispensary, I think brand. What, what, is it, what is a brand that you know, really talks about the, the, uh, the company? What, what is the image you're trying to put out there? The, the dispensaries that we see that are the most successful have a story to tell and that story is told in the aesthetics how it's laid out the flow of the facility and you know it it gives them an image that they can build on and mm -hmm. so okay. i really think that that's the most important um thing to think about yeah let's uh, just wind up with a couple of uh, cost factors what what's a typical cost per square foot on a on a cultivation and uh, and a dispensary uh, uh, Give, give us some idea of what costs are here. Okay, I, I, you know, it's hard to really nail down a cost and I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of talk about- Just ballpark uh, it, just ballpark uh, it. You know, mechanical systems come into play, single versus dual deer type of lighting, fertigation systems, ground up brand new construction, anywhere between 300 and 450 a square foot. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. Well, uh, I, I think, uh, having worked on uh, this AIA course, and by the way, that's at bdcuniversity.com. Uh, look that up and you can get 1.0 AIA uh, units on that. Uh, you know, this, I think uh, my piece of what I took away, Sam, was don't get in this business unless you're really serious about it because it's really hard to get it right. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> it, it's very true. And if you do get into it, you know, put a good team together and, and trust that team based on the qualifications of the folks that you bring to the table. Great. Well, we've been with Sam Andres 
uh, AIA senior principal and, and partner with uh, Z, uh, 2WR, not ZWR, 2WR part and partners and MJ12 Design Studio. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Sam. Rob, thank you. I appreciate it.